what do we um, mean by these models and how do we get them and what do we use them for right. So, that is something which we need to understand. So, once again I am revisiting our uh, uh, idea of uh, what we mean by a system right. So, for us uh, a system is a mapping between u of t and y of t. Now, suppose if uh, let me call this as problem 1 ok. The first problem I want to solve is that given uh, u of t and y of t we are asked to find the mapping s ok that relates uh, the input u of t and the output y of t ok. This problem is what is called as the problem of synthesis that is uh, suppose let us say you do not like uh, 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 see for uh, let me take an example of a room that is being air conditioned right. So, let us say if I take the example of a room that is being air conditioned then uh, you suppose if I uh, want to regulate the temperature of the room right. So, the temperature of air in the room is the in output of the system and uh, let us say the input to the system is the amount of cold air ok that I uh, blow into the room. Okay, so, let us say you know like uh, let us look at this <coughs> let us say we have a room uh, air conditioner right. So, let us say the temperature of air in the room is my output and let us say the amount of cold air uh, provided right to the room through the AC vents. Uh, is the input to the system. So, what would this uh, synthesis problem entail you know like the problem of synthesis essentially means that uh, I provide uh, uh, varying quantities of uh, the input to the system and then measure the output and try to get a mapping between the two ok. So, that is what I do. So, that I get a mathematical model for the uh, system. So, in this case you know like if I provide various amounts of cold air to my uh, what to say air conditioner and I measure the corresponding temperature and I get a relationship between the two. So, then I will know how temperature of air in this particular room would vary you know like I say provide varying amounts of uh, cold air right. So, that is something which I will uh, know. So, once I uh, do this first problem of synthesis I can go and do problem number 2 which is going to be the following given the mapping s once we find the mapping s and given a particular input u of t find y of t. Suppose I have got a mathematical model for temperature of van in this room right equipped with an air conditioner. So, tomorrow let us say you know like I, uh, I want to uh, essentially change the air conditioner right. So, and let us say I have 5 choices. So, I know like what, what is the capacity of uh, what to say blowing cold air into the room of all the 5 ACs right. Without even purchasing them I can use the model which I have developed to figure out how temperature would uh, vary and settle down to a desired value by doing this analysis right. Once I have the mathematical model for this particular process of air conditioning. So, the advantage is that like I can predict the temperature variation without even uh, uh, essentially the requirement of buying the air conditioner installing it and testing it right. So, that I can make a well informed choice right as far as which AC uh, to buy. So, this problem uh, is what is called as the analysis problem or the prediction problem ok. So, that is that is essentially the analysis or the prediction problem <coughs> ok. So, and uh, let us say uh, we have looked at uh, these two problems you know like uh, another problem which we can do once we complete the synthesis problem is that given the mapping s and a desired output y of t find u of t ok that is the third problem that we can solve. So, this problem is what is called as the control problem ok. So, what do I mean by this you know like suppose let us say you know I come into a room with an air conditioner. Uh, I essentially want to uh, what to say uh, regulate the temperature of air in this room right. Uh, 
So I set the temperature of air uh, as 25 degrees Celsius. The question is that like what is the amount of cold air which I should blow, you know, which would get my temperature to 25 degrees Celsius, right? That is the problem of control. So I know what is the uh, mapping of the uh, dynamic system and I want a desired output, what is the input which I have to provide, okay? So in a certain sense, it is uh, the inverse problem of what we do in problem number 1, right? So <coughs> here, you know, like uh, uh, or inverse of what we do in problem number 2, right? So, <coughs> so this mapping helps us to find a y of t given a u of t. Uh, in the problem of control, what we do is that like given a y of t, uh, you know, like I want to use this mapping to find what u of t will get me the uh, output y of t, right? So that is the problem of uh, control, okay? So uh, what are a uh, uh, few examples of uh, control, you know, like uh, that we, ca we can essentially look at, you know, like we have already looked at, uh, you know, like uh, room temperature control. Right, so that's that's one example that we have uh, discussed. Right, let's say you know like uh, we have also looked at uh, uh, an example where we want to control the motor speed of a motor. Right, okay, and our human body is a marvelous controller. See, for example, you know like our human body maintains our body temperature in a very very narrow band. Right. So uh, even like if, if it is if the temperature goes to 100 uh, degree Fahrenheit, right? So we are in trouble, correct? So uh, so essentially our uh, body maintains our internal body temperature, you know, like in a very narrow band, irrespective of what that environment temperature is, right? So it doesn't matter whether we are in winter or in summer, you know, the human internal body temperature is maintained at almost a constant value. And that's a great control system, you know. Like, and for example, uh, the blood pressure, you know, like that is maintained by a body, you know, it should be in a good range. Blood sugar levels, right? So that's another uh, a marvelous control mechanism. And uh, in fact, like even our heartbeat, right? So even our heart, which is a pump, essentially that pumps, you know, like blood throughout the body, you know, like it needs to work repeatedly again and again, right? So for you know, like as far as we live, right? So that's extremely important for us, right? So our human body is filled with uh, marvelous controllers, you know, which regulate various variables, you know, like uh, around uh, desired values very accurately and for a long time, you know, that's something which is marvelous, right? So, uh, 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 so essentially we are going to uh, uh, look at uh, various case studies as we go along and then like we will see how to formulate uh, practical problems as a control problem and uh, solve them, okay? So, uh, <coughs> before we, uh, what to say, get into the mathematics, uh, I just want to give uh, a more another physical perspective as far as uh, what we, uh, what to say, uh, how we classify, how we look at control and so on, right? So, uh, essentially in a very broad sense, uh, people classify control as what is called as open loop control and closed loop control. So what are these uh, terms? So uh, let us say we consider uh, the example of a ceiling fan, right? So if I have a ceiling fan, uh, what is going to happen? I have a fan, uh, I have a regulator, I have a switch, right? I can come switch on the fan and I can vary the speed setting maybe in discrete, uh, what is it, quantities by using the fan speed regulator and uh, that is about it, right? So uh, I just get some output which is a fan RPM, okay? So uh, that is an open loop controller in the sense that, you know, like uh, it cannot account for any disturbances, right? So which come during the operation of the fan. See for example, if there is a voltage fluctuation, right? Uh, then, you know, like the uh, output of the fan or the speed of rotation of the fan is going to fall down. Okay, or go up depending on whether the voltage is falling down or going up, all right? So then, you know, like the question is that like uh, I lose certain performance, right? But the question we need to ask ourselves is that like is it important for a ceiling fan, right? So typically ceiling fans are open loop uh, control systems where uh, 
uh, the speed settings are calibrated in the factory and the regulator essentially uh, uh, adjusts the uh, what to say fan RPM in discrete uh, what to say uh, in a discrete range of values right set of values and uh, essentially in the presence of disturbances obviously the system uh, response gets affected right. So, that is a uh, uh, what to say characteristic of open loop control ok. So, open loop control means you know like what are the various uh, <coughs> what to say uh, characteristics there is uh, no feedback we will shortly define what is called as feedback ok. So, uh, as a result there is no feedback uh, in open loop control. Uh, uh, so, uh, essentially uh, it cannot uh, tolerate disturbances ok, it is not robust to disturbances and so on ok. But on the flip side the cost and complexity are lower <coughs> On the other hand suppose you know like if we want uh, a, a fan you know like whose RPM needs to be maintained at a uh, let us say very baseline value let us say 100 RPM right and I cannot afford a huge variation in the RPM right for some industrial application right what would I do uh, what I would do is that like I would measure the uh, actual RPM using a speed sensor and then like I would take the uh, actual RPM at each and every instant of time compare it with what is the desired value and then take the difference. Uh, quantify the difference between what I desire and what is actually uh, being obtained, take that error and pass it through what is called as a controller and the controller will then adjust the electrical input to the fan right. Then when that happens you know like we have what is called as closed loop control ok and closed loop control systems have feedback ok, feedback is a process of uh, measuring variables that need to be regulated or controlled. So, that uh, corrective action can be taken ok that is the process of uh, feedback. So, consequently closed loop control uh, what to say uh, is uh, more tolerant or robust to uncertainties that come in disturbances and so on. Okay. And uh, typically what we called as <coughs> uh, during the design process unmodeled dynamics and so on ok. So, but anyway let me uh, qualify them uh, group them under uncertainties ok, uncertainties disturbances and all. But the flip side of uh, closed loop control is then uh, what to say the cost and complexity are higher. Okay. So, in this particular course we are going to deal with closed loop control ok. So, that is what we are going to deal with in this particular course ok. So, uh, let me just uh, draw construct an example to just uh, uh, what to say. explain what we did. Suppose let us say you know like uh, we have uh, let us say a DC motor right. So, the DC motor is our uh, system ok or plant ok and uh, to this DC motor let us say I provide a voltage uh, V of t as my uh, input and omega t is my output. So, this is my uh, input and this is my output. Suppose let us say I want a desired output ok. Let us say a 
desired RPM of rotation okay, or from the uh, motor. So, this is what we call as a reference uh, input okay. and what we do then is the following. So, suppose if I measure the actual output then what I do is then I go and compare then I take the difference between uh, what I desire <coughs> and what I measure which is what is called as an error and then let us say we pass it through an element called as a controller and the controller then calculates what should be the uh, uh, input that should be provided to the DC motor. Okay. When the controller calculates the input that should be provided uh, to the system, the adjective control is added to the term input. Okay. So, the input to the system becomes what is called as a, a control input. Okay. So, this is feedback. Okay. So, this is a typical layout of a closed uh, loop control system with uh, what is called as negative feedback. Okay. <coughs> okay. So, this is essentially closed loop control system with negative feedback. Why it is negative feedback? Because at the summing junction you can see that we are we are subtracting you know like uh, the uh, feedback signal is subtracted from the uh, desired uh, reference input right. So, that is why it is called as uh, uh, negative feedback. Okay. So, we are uh, taking the difference between the reference input and the uh, actual output okay, and uh, calculating the error. Okay. This is what is called as a closed loop control system with uh, negative feedback. Okay. So, uh, we can see that this is what we are going to uh, essentially do in this particular course. Okay. So, some more uh, terms uh, that I want to, uh, uh, what to say uh, introduce here is that like this process of uh, essentially taking this output measurement and feeding it back, uh, giving it back is what is called as feedback. This is what is called as a feedback path. Typically, you know, like uh, we can have uh, a mapping in the feedback path. See, for example, uh, see, for example, you know, like we can have some sensor dynamics uh, coming into play here, right? So, let's say I use a sensor for measuring speed. You know, like that may have its own dynamic characteristics. I may use, I may need to use a filter to filter out noise. Then uh, the uh, a mapping comes uh, in the feedback path. Okay. So, if a mapping comes in the feedback path, you know, like we call it as a uh, when the mapping is not one, we call it as a non-unity feedback. Okay, so when this mapping in the feedback path is one, we call it as unity feedback. Okay, like we will see how uh, this affects our analysis later on, right? And <coughs> many times, you know, like when the controller uh, provides, a, you know, like calculates and provides a control signal to the system. Uh, it, it is typically realized by what is called as an actuator. See for example, you know like uh, the uh, let us say you know I have to essentially uh, move uh, say design a motion control system you know like that essentially displaces a work piece uh, along one axis right. Let us say simple translation of a work piece in a, in a machine machining system right. So, let us say you know like I, I want to regulate the position of the uh, work piece right. I give a uh, what to say voltage signal to a, let us say an electric motor drive system which essentially uh, uh, provides translational motion to the work piece right. Suppose if a controller uh, calculates that at this point of time provide 5 volts of input right to the electric motor okay or if it calculates and tells me that look you know like provide you know like 10 newtons of force to the uh, work piece you know like to essentially move it by some distance x. Right. So, the controller may say provide 10 newtons at this instant of time, but then there may be a small uh, what to say response time before the 10 newtons is actually realized in practice through the electric motor and drive system. Right. So, that 
if that is important then you know we need to figure out figure in what is called as actuator dynamics in the design process okay and sometimes you know like uh, we can have disturbances coming into the system right let us say you know like uh, uh, I have uh, what to say sudden uh, or load that may come on a DC motor right for example you know in that time need to model as a disturbance and then like see how uh, we can overcome such disturbances and so on right. So, one can see that you know we can add varying levels of complexity to this uh, feedback uh, path okay at uh, this feedback system okay we are going to uh, study the basic feedback loop you know like that is what we are going to do in this particular uh, course okay and as we go along maybe when we go to some case studies we will add some more blocks okay and then see uh, how the uh, design varies okay. To summarize you know like what, what we, we, we are going to do in this course is the following okay. So, as a summary of all this uh, discussion that we did, so our the title of our course is control systems right. So, what we are going to do what we are going to learn is the following right closed loop feedback control <coughs> of CISO LTI causal dynamic systems ok. So, that is what we are going to do in this particular course ok. So, that is the class of systems that we are going to uh, do CISO LTA causal uh, dynamic systems and we are going to do what is called as closed loop feedback control right of this class of systems ok. And it so turns out that uh, this class of systems right CISO LTA uh, causal dynamic systems uh, the the mathematical models uh, that are typically used to characterize uh, this class of systems. usually take the form of a linear linear ordinary differential equations Okay, what, what are abbreviated as ODEs with constant coefficients. Okay. So, typically the uh, uh, mathematical models that are used to characterize uh, this class of systems that we are going to study in this particular course uh, take the form of uh, linear ordinary differential equations with constant coefficients ok. So, that is the class of equations that we would be uh, focusing on and uh, another important aspect is that the kind of uh, mathematical models we are going to essentially uh, look at are what are called as uh, spatially homogeneous uh, that means that we, we do not consider uh, what to say variations of variables uh, with space right. So, we only consider temporal variations of variables see for example, let us say I want to analyze uh, the variation of uh, temperature of air in this room right. So, obviously, the temperature of air in this room can be different you know like depending on the point where I am measuring and also the time at which I measure right. So, but then what we do is that like we lump all the uh, points in this room uh, that is the temperature. Uh, of all the points in this room into a single entity uh, which essentially uh, can be represented as a function of time okay. Uh, 
So, in a certain sense, you know, like what we are doing is that we are lumping the effects, okay, uh, as far as spatial variation is concerned, and we are going to assume that uh, the entire room can be characterized by a single temperature which is only a function of time. Okay? So, spatially homogeneous uh, means you know like we are essentially following sort of a lump parameter approach right towards uh, modeling. Right? So, spatially homogeneous uh, we are going to have uh, what are called continuous time, uh, continuous time uh, dynamic deterministic Uh, mathematical models. Okay, that's the class of models we are going to use, right? So essentially, uh, in a certain sense, you know, like continuous time means you know, like we treat time as a continuous variable. Uh, variable. So uh, uh, from pragmatic perspective, it just means that we are going to get ODEs, right? Ordinary differential equations. Uh, dynamic means we are going to have derivatives in the equations. You know, like that, that's what uh, uh, essentially it means. It it, it uh, basically it represents. So, what is a, a dynamic model? It is something which explicitly considers a future uh, states of the system, right? Uh, so, and it uh, essentially incorporates what is going to happen to the system in future, right? Through by incorporating derivatives of the variables. So, that is a dynamic model. Deterministic means we essentially uh, neglect uh, any stochastic effects, okay? Uh, we do not consider uh, variables as random variables, we consider all variables as deterministic variables and we are going to have deterministic models. Okay? So, this is a class of models uh, that we are going to use. So, in summary, you know like uh, what we are going to do in this course is closed loop feedback control of CISO LTA causal dynamic systems using spatially homogeneous continuous time dynamic deterministic mathematical models. Okay? So, that is what we are going to uh, essentially learn how to do in this course. Okay? So, what we would uh, subsequently do is essentially have a brief recap of uh, what is the mathematical background that is required uh, to do this analysis. Okay? So, that is something which we are going to uh, learn, okay? uh, which we are going to recap. You know, it is uh, assumed that some mathematical uh, courses have already been completed before uh, one comes to this particular course. Uh, particularly uh, courses on complex variables, ordinary differential equations and Laplace transform. So, we would quickly uh, recap uh, some of these uh, uh, what to say tools uh, and then we would move forward. Okay? So, that is going to be the uh, plan of action. Fine? Okay. So, thank you.